Hi everyone, welcome back to module two for the KPMG internship. Um, so today we're gonna go through all the graphs that I created and finish off the RFM table that we started with last time. So basically let's start right here where we left off last time. Basically we're using the, uh, the quartiles um, that we've created um, here, just between the numbers. So between 88, 88 and up, 45 and 88, 18 and 45 and so on. So we'll start off with the recency value. First we have, we have to create the if statement, testing the value in the recency column. And if it is greater than 88, we're gonna assign it a, a one. So the reason for that is um, because that, that means it was quite a while ago, so over 88 days ago. So we're giving it a one. So for the next one, we're gonna, basically the other 25%, the, the, the between 50 and 75%, we're gonna give it a two and so on. So we're gonna continue down. Equal to larger than eighteen for three. And a four. So the most recent value will get the four which is why it's seven here. Fill that down. All right, good, and then we're basically gonna do the exact same thing for the rest, except we're gonna assign the higher percentile, so like the top 25%, we're gonna assign that number of four. Just copy that in. Change the column, sorry, the cell that we're looking at. Basically just copy from the tables that we made last time. So higher than a seven and this one is gonna get a four because it's a higher frequency. And just filling the rest in. Don't forget the small one and not equal to. Alright, nice. I think that looks good. And fill that down. Okay, and then same thing with the M score. RFM value will be calculated. We'll put the greatest weight on the recency. So we're gonna do 100 times that cell plus 10 times F4 plus the M score. So we get a RFM value like that, fill that down. And then finally, we're gonna assign them a customer title. So, um, we're gonna create an interquartile range again for the RFM value this time. There it is. And then we're gonna do the if statement and we'll just assign, say if it's larger than um, 411, so the top 25% top will say this customer is platinum. Oops. There we 
we go, and so on. So basically it's the same thing, but instead of a value this time, we're assigning them names. Gold, and we'll go down to bronze, I guess. Smaller than or equal to taller than will be bronze. Perfect. So I go and fill that through. Yeah. I'm sure there's other ways of assigning um, names, but um, that's what we're going to do. All right. So now um, we're going to use this information to create uh, an RFM graph. So first thing we need to do is we need to highlight the, we're just going to use these two columns. We're going to create a new pivot table, selecting both of those values. I need to make sure that Let's count. There, so that's what the chart's basically gonna look like. We can change the format all you want. Okay, so to finish off the whole PowerPoint, we need a couple more graphs. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna add an age category. So we're gonna change the, uh, the, the code for this is gonna be trunk G2 value divided by 10. And plus one, so it gives you a value and then we're gonna multiply that by a 10. So you see how it says 70, that basically means uh, between 60 and 69. That's the age group that that represents and it's the same for all the numbers. And for like when you get to 90, um, sorry, when you get to 20, it's gonna be 20 and under because uh, there's no ages under 10. Go. So same thing, create a pivot table, select the categories, and then um, it's pretty easily just create a graph. There you go. Obviously, you get rid of the blanks. Nice, and um, just we all format that a bit differently. Okay. Another age category. This time, this is the new customer list. Uh, it's the same code. This time, because it's new customer list, um, we're gonna have a comparison. Oops, multiplied by 10, let's figure it It's exactly the same. Again, creating a new pivot table. There we go, that's the final product. And here are all my, this is the collection of my graphs so far. Okay, so next, let's see, int customer, customer demographic, and we're gonna create a new pivot table, just using all the data from there. Maybe age category again, wealth segments and customer ID. So this, will, the final pivot table that we're gonna make and graph is of states in respect to the number of people that have cars, because that's important for a bike store. So choose owns car and we don't have customer IDs. We're gonna use first name, that's good enough. And we're just gonna, um, so it's either yes or a no. Uh, and then we need to move out the state as well and we'll make sure it's count of first names. There we go. 
So our graph, we can reformat it a little to make a bit more sense. Just like, okay, that's it. That looks a bit better, easier to understand. And there, that's basically it. That's the collection of all the graphs. Um, and we'll, we'll be using the, these to make a, a little bit of an analysis in the PowerPoint. All right, so that's basically the end of module two. Um, in the next video of module three, I will uh, post my solutions for the PowerPoint in the same way that I did for the email. Um, yeah, so have fun. I hope this helped. Uh, and I'll see you next time.